Hey guys, welcome back to The Style and Beauty Doctor on YouTube. And in today's video, my hair and I are going over some more mineral sunscreens for dark skin. Now, sunscreen is super important. It is so important that, dare I say, that if you're not wearing sunscreen in your skincare routine, you ain't got a skincare routine. I'm just sorry. You, there's no skincare routine without sunscreen. And we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about why some of these mineral sunscreens are for dark skin and why some of them are. Why'd you even bother sending it to me? <laughs> so keep watching. So very quickly, I wanted to talk about the differences between physical sunscreen slash mineral sunscreens and chemical sunscreens. Now there are pluses and minuses on both sides, but I'm gonna let you decide which one would be better for your skin. My goal here is just to get you to wear sunscreen, period. I find that if you, if you find one that feels good on your skin, that looks good on your skin, you're more apt to wear it and that's just, that's just goals. That's just what I want you to do. So very quickly, so physical slash mineral sunscreens work by blocking the sun's rays. So it's kind of like, you know, Wonder Woman with her, Wonder Woman used to wear these things on her wrist and it would kind of block like, you know, like the evil forces and, and the rays and stuff like that. Think of physical slash mineral sunscreens in that way, that when the sun's rays kind of come to the skin, it blocks it, so it's like a shield. So it's like, <laughs> you like my sound effect, right? Chemical sunscreens, on the other hand, work by absorbing the rays into the skin. There's a chemical reaction that happens, and then the rays are released as heat. But like I said, there are pluses and minuses to both, and you can figure out which one is best for you. I personally prefer chemical sunscreens, but although I do prefer chemical sunscreens, in trying out so many different ones, I found some really amazing physical sunscreens that I've liked as well. And you can check out my previous two videos to find out which ones those are. Side note, I have tried probably hundreds of sunscreens over the years. So make sure you check out the link in the description box, which will take you to my non ashy sunscreen series. Literally hundreds of sunscreens because you know, you guys know, did you try XYZ sunscreen? Yes, I tried it. Look at the link in the description box. So make sure you check out the link in the description box because chances are I've tried the sunscreen that you're thinking of. And if I have not, then you know, of course, let me know. Maybe I might need to try something new. So let's get on to the first one in this video. So first up from La Roche-Posay, I just love saying that, La Roche-Posay. <laughs> Anthelios 50 Mineral Ultra Light Sunscreen Fluid. Um, this is tinted. What I love about this, I love the packaging. Now, La Roche-Posay, it's funny how much more it costs when you buy it here in the US because I think I paid almost like $30 for this um, on Target.com. Whereas if I was at a French pharmacy, I'm pretty sure I would have paid a fraction of that price, but they never will require me to fly to France <laughs> in order to get that. And, but anyway, so this sunscreen, I wound up looking at La Roche-Posay because La Roche-Posay makes some amazing sunscreens. And I heard that they had made um, some really great cosmetically elegant. And by cosmetically elegant, I mean like, you know, it's not a white paste sitting on your skin looking like Elmer's glue. La Roche-Posay is a brand that has some great mineral sunscreens. From what I've heard, I hadn't tried any until now. This one's not bad. The only thing is when I saw that it said tinted, I was like, mm. Cause you know, if you have deeper skin tone like mine or deeper, you know that you have been <laughs> physically harmed by some beauty product that said it was tinted before in life, okay? And when I saw the tint on this, it's like this very light beige <laughs> color. And I was just like, that's not gonna blend in my skin. But you know what? It does. The thing with this, it's very tricky and I would not want to go through this on a regular basis myself. If your skin is lighter than mine, you may not have this issue. But I do find that you have to put a little bit at the, see look, you see how my hand is all ashy here? You have to put a little bit on at a time and you know, make sure that you really massage it into the skin. Now the thing with putting a little bit at a time, 
is that you still want to put enough on your face and then for your whole entire body it's like a shot glass full to you know for how much sunscreen you need to apply because if you are not applying enough sunscreen you may not get the full SPF that is listed on the bottle. So when you're applying your mineral sunscreens, the ones that need a little extra help going in and you're putting a little bit on at a time, make sure that you are still putting enough on so that you're covering, you know, your entire face, you know, behind your ears. Um, sometimes if you have your, your scalp is exposed, you may want to get a little sunscreen in there. There are, there's also hair sunscreen products, but Maybe we'll do a video on that down the line. You know, but make sure you're getting it all the little crevices, you know, your neck and your chest. Usually I just put my body sunscreen on my neck and my chest, but that's a tip to know. So this one wasn't bad. My skin doesn't like a lot of friction. So like, unfortunately, as much as I love men with facial hair, a lot of times just their facial hair touching my skin like this can be enough for my skin to like bump up and have a, a reaction. So if I'm massaging my skin a little bit too much, my skin does tend to be like, yo, what are you doing? Back up. And it does have a little reaction to it. So this would be a little bit too much for me. But if you're patient and you don't have that kind of like manual stimulation <laughs> kind of reaction to your skin, you might like this one. This one was okay, but it wasn't like, you know, mm -hmm. and then from what I understand, the one that's not tinted is worse. <laughs> to rub in, but I, have, I don't have it and I haven't tried it. So if you've tried both the tinted and the, um, it's not clear, it's white, <laughs> and the non-tinted version of the La Roche-Posay, let me know in the comments. Next up, this one really shocked me. This is the Coats, the Healthier Skin, Flawless Complexion, Tinted SPF 50, Vanishing Zinc Oxide Mineral Sunscreen for the face. Now, again, I saw tinted and I was like, I have been physically harmed by beauty products that listed that they were tinted before in life and it's triggering. <laughs> but so many people, as a matter of fact, someone um, slid in the DMs. Thank you. When I love when you guys slide in my DMs on Instagram and said, Danielle, your subscribers need to know about this sunscreen. Every woman of color needs to know about this sunscreen. And I'm like, okay, let me check it out. Then I put up a post about, you know, asking people what sunscreens they're using right now because I like to, you know, do a little wellness checks, make sure you guys are wearing your sunscreens. And someone else had raved about this one. But yes, pleasantly, pleasantly, pleasantly surprised by the coat sunscreen. It's tinted, it looks beige, it looks like it is impossible for it to blend into a deeper skin tone, but you know, it did. <laughs> it blended in really nicely. It doesn't have a matte finish where it's going to like, you know, where it feels like it zapped all of the moisture out of your skin, but it's not shiny, which is great, especially for the summertime. So this is definitely a go in my book. So yay for the coat sunscreen. All right, next up, Australian Gold has a fairly new um, BB cream. This one is in the deep. It's for rich to deep skin tones. Um, it's called the Botanical Sunscreen Tinted Face SPF 50, lightweight, matte finish, it's antioxidant rich, and it's vegan, water resistant up to 80 minutes, and just a quick little note on water resistance and when you're wearing your sunscreens, if you're like, you go for a run and you're like drenched, you're gonna want to, you know, towel off and reapply your sunscreen, especially if you're gonna be out more in the sun. Um, if you hop in the pool or somebody throws a water balloon at you, 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 I don't know, run into a fire hydrant or something and you're drenched, you're gonna wanna, you know, towel off, dry up, and then reapply your sunscreen. Throughout the day, you want to reapply your, sun, your sunscreen every two hours. Um, and that's especially true if you're gonna be outdoors because, you know, after a while, the sweat and, and the things like that kind of break down the sunscreen. Anyway, I'm kind of stolen because um, I did not love <laughs> this Australian gold product like at all. Um, the thing is, it's tinted and at first I was like, ooh, that's not gonna match because it's, it's brown, it's a deeper, deeper brown, um, but the undertones are like this pinky grayish kind of color. And at first I was like, all right, well, the La Roche-Posay was beige, the Coats was beige, the Coats blended in seamlessly. Uh, the La Roche-Posay took a little bit of work, but it wasn't, you know, as bad. But both were beige and it happened to somewhat work, the Coats more than the La Roche-Posay for me. So I was like, all right, well, maybe, you know, maybe the, the color doesn't matter and, 
Oh, the color mattered. <laughs> um, I'm sure this will match some skin tones. Not mine, and maybe not anybody that I know, but uh, I, I don't I know sometimes it's kind of hard to add, um, and I think the main in here, this has titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. I know that it's hard to add sunscreen to like complexion products. Um, when it comes to the deeper skin tones because of the way that the, you know, it's a whole rigmarole about, you know, the, the, the color of the product and the pigments and yada yada. But I understand that that's harder to make, but I don't know. <laughs> and it's a BB cream, which I thought would have been like a really good thing because then you get kind of like, you know, you kill two birds with one stone. Um, but, you know, just another tidbit here, I would not recommend that you mix this with your makeup because you might be like, oh, well, the color is bad. I'll just, you know, add more of my foundation. I wouldn't do that because you can degrade the SPF. Now, yes, there are products out there, makeup products, foundations, um, you know, all kinds of makeup out there that has sunscreen in it. But those are made in a lab. Like, unless you got credentials that I don't know about, don't go mixing your sunscreen with other things, okay? So just on that note. So this was a dud, but hey, it might work for someone out there. Not me, probably not you, but somebody out there it'll work for. Next up, the Neutrogena Sheer Zinc Dry Touch Family. I tried the 30, I tried the 50, and I tried the 50 plus mineral stick. Um, these, okay, well, one thing really quickly I wanted to talk about is the difference between a 30 and a 50. The 50 doesn't mean that it's almost twice as much protection as the 30. Between the two, there's maybe like a 1% to 2% difference in um, sun protection and how they block the sun's rays. But there's always going to be a sunscreen out there for everyone. So for instance, if you're going outside and you're going to be like, I don't know, fishing or boating or running a marathon or something, maybe you might want to opt for the higher SPF. If you're doing like low, you know, you're just going for a quick walk, um, you're working indoors, you may do the 30. It's all going to depend on your skin and your preferences. Some people can actually have like a wardrobe of sunscreens depending on what they're going to be doing, what makeup they're wearing. So that's one cool thing about sunscreen. And one thing that I mentioned before, there's a sunscreen out there for everybody. As long as you are wearing it, that's all I care about and wearing it properly. But anyway, these were great. I like that you can find these at your drugstore and you can probably even find like a really good BOGO sale, like buy one, get one half off at Walgreens, CVS, you know, whatever drugstore is near you or even in your grocery store. These do take a little bit of work to rub into the skin. This is not going to be a you know, slap it on and I'm done kind of thing. You may want to take your time with these, apply a little bit at a time, rub it in. But when you're applying a little bit at a time, make sure that you are putting enough on. You're going to need about a shot glass full for your entire body. You want to make sure that you're getting all the little crevices behind your ears and between your fingers and between your toes, your scalp, like your part might be exposed. You just want to make sure that you're applying a sunscreen properly, but I actually wound up liking these even though it took a little, you know, it took a little muscle work <laughs> to get these to blend into the skin, but eventually they do. These are sunscreens that I would use for my body, um, so I don't, my body skin doesn't mind the extra manipulation to rub it in, so I would definitely use these for body. My favorite Neutrogena sunscreens though are either the Beach Defense, the Beach Defense is like my, one of my favorite body sunscreens, period. But I also like the Dry Touch um, on the chemical side for Neutrogena as well. But if you're looking for a mineral option, these are good. The stick, I like the stick because the stick, you can stick, you can stick the stick in the bag, in a bag. It's small, it's easy to transport. Um, not that most of us are going to be traveling by plane, but, but you could probably, because it's less than three ounces and it's a solid, you can probably get this in your carry-on bag, you know, when we can get to travel again. And the stick, it's, you know, you just uh, rub it on, rub it in, but you got to make sure that you put enough in so the stick can be really convenient depending on, you know, your lifestyle and what you're doing. But I like that there are different types of sunscreens out there because, again, 
The point is to get you to wear it. <laughs> now we're gonna talk about makeup and mineral sunscreens in a minute, but I wanted to go over the last sunscreen, last but not least, because this is probably, with the coats, probably my top one out of all of these mineral sunscreens that I've tried in this video. This one is from a brand called Verse. This is their Guards Up Daily Mineral Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 35. It has 15.2% zinc oxide. I love a good tube packaging because I feel like I can tighten it so tight so that the, there's no product spillage. And the bottle, well the bottle, the container, is small enough to fit in almost any bag. You know, once we get to travel again, <laughs> you could take this and carry on. You know, provided nothing, you know, sets TSA off. Now the thing with this sunscreen, it is tinted and you look at it and it's kind of like a peachy beige and you're like, how is that gonna match me? But it does and it feels really great on, um, especially when you're massaging it into the skin because it really glides on the skin. I love a good glide because some mineral sunscreens can tend to feel kind of thick and pasty and they don't really have that glide to them. But this has a little glide, I like the little glide. Um, it disappears much quicker into the skin than any of the other sunscreen, the other mineral sunscreens we've tried here have. Um, it has a nice, it's, I wouldn't call the finish matte. I would say maybe the finish is more like a satin matte because it's not, it's not shiny, but it's not also matte where it looks like you're devoid of all moisture and hydration from your skin. So this one's really great. Um, I bought it online. I don't know where they sell versed in stores, but if I can find like a, an in-store location, I'll link it in the description box. But I definitely bought this from their site. It was like 21 bucks, um, a little more than what I would usually like to spend on a sunscreen, but I mean, I like the packaging, I like the product. So if I was someone who was like really gung ho about using mineral sunscreens, I would probably, you know, repurchase the Versed sunscreen. So let us talk about makeup and mineral sunscreen. So a couple of things that you're gonna wanna know because you know, I'm just throwing out some tidbits here. But for one, after you apply your mineral sunscreen, most of them work immediately to block the sun's rays. Um, some of them may tell you wait 15 minutes, you know, just make sure you look at the back and see, you know, what it, what it tells you to do. But when you are going to put on makeup after you wear mineral sunscreen, I would give it a few minutes. Just, it, it doesn't need to settle per se, in order for it to work. But if you're gonna put something else on top of it, I would say to give it some time to settle, per se. Um, and then if you're applying a foundation, I would use a sponge as opposed to a brush, because with a sponge, you can dab the foundation on. With the brush, it can kind of disturb the sunscreen and kind of pick up the sunscreen with the brush. So when, you, when you're applying your makeup, keep that in mind if you're wearing a mineral sunscreen, to use a sponge where you can kind of dab it on. If you're using a powder foundation, you're, you're likely okay, but you know, just make sure you go easy because you don't want to pick up the sunscreen as well on your makeup. Another thing you want to keep in mind is these are going to probably <laughs> make you look like a ghost when you take a picture with flash. These are probably more than likely going to give you flashback. I always say like, why are you taking pictures with flash during the day anyway? Because during the days when you need to wear your sunscreen. But then now that I think about it, I'm like, well, what if you put your sunscreen on and then, you know, it was the daytime and then like, you know, later on you're still out at night. So keep that in mind that these are going to give you some flashback, uh, you know, when you take your, your selfies and stuff with flash. And then another thing you're gonna wanna know is that, and I kind of talked about this already in the video, is that mineral sunscreens, because of how they work, they sit on top of the skin, it can take a little, a little extra to make sure that you get them off properly. So you may wanna do a double cleanse. And for tips on how to do that, as well as more tips on properly cleansing your skin, a video that I did with an esthetician, make sure you check it out. I have it linked above in the cards and below in the description box as well. So check it out. So that is my latest on the mineral sunscreens. Have you tried any of the sunscreens that 
I talked about in this video. What were your thoughts? Now we're talking about mineral sunscreens here. You know, if you wanna find out what chemical sunscreens or if I've tried, you know, XYZ sunscreen, uh, Unsun, Black Girl sunscreen, uh, Super Goop unscreen, unscreen, unseen? You know which Super Goop one I'm talking about. I've tried it already. You can check out my review in the description box linked below. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on mineral sunscreens, which ones you've tried. Have you tried any that I have tried here? Follow me on social. The link will be in the description box. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn your notifications on. And I will see you fine folks in my next video. Bye, guys.